Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 102 of the Local Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Will Crosby, and joining me this week is a man who has always been here, and he's made out of the wax, those little candy bottles come in. It's Ian Gibson. Sometimes I eat that wax, and sometimes I eat sunflower seeds, and sometimes I eat peanut shells. I, I, I'm i with you on the sunflower seeds. The other two, I'm not with you at all. Zero percent. I think, the so peanut shells, the problem is they taste good. It's just the texture's not great, but it's like all the salty goodness on the shell <laughs> is really good. I, you don't just want to lick them? You know, I've never tried that. Maybe suckle on them a little bit. I hate that so much. Um, folks, we're here to talk about <laughs> video games and such. Um, we should we got to add this this episode to the list of episodes where Ian comes in too hot and stalls the podcast. <laughs> I hate it so much. Uh, um, oh boy, uh, I'm, your stupid video is unsynced again, but I don't care. I don't care. Um, Ian, how's your computer? It doesn't work. <laughs> so we talked about this on the streams a little bit. I don't know if I've talked about local chat yet, but I decided a week or two ago to buy a new computer because I can. And it turns out when I went to PC part picker and logical increments and I built out my dream computer within reason, you know, I didn't buy like a thousand dollar PC case because it's made of gold or something. But mm. basically, every every part, I was like, let me just max that out, pretty much. Let me max that out. And I did all of that, and it came out to, like, $2,100. And I was like, that is cheap. And so I That's just not bought bad. all of it. And I put it all together. Um, I had it running for about two days. And um, the only things I did on it was I did a Cinebench benchmark for, for a couple times just to, to see if it was working. I did uh, like one uh, GPU benchmark and I was like, looks great. I'm running at 8K 60 FPS. Awesome. <laughs> and then I played a little bit of Portal RTX and then I played like eight hours of Vampire Survivors. And I was like, great. And then I walked away from my computer. I came back three hours later and it was stuck on the Windows boot screen. And I was like, that's weird. I left my computer on. <laughs> and now it just reboots endlessly. Uh, about if I sit there and let it reboot for about 20 times, it will get into Windows for a minute and then it will reboot. Uh, and so basically, long story short, I pulled the GPU, I pulled all the hard drives except for the M2s. Um, I swapped out the power supply, I reset the BIOS, and I even tried a different power supply and it still does it. So it's either motherboard or CPU. And um, thankfully, Newegg got some egg on their face last year when they tried to sell a used motherboard to somebody as brand new and it forced them to implement a brand new return policy where they basically have like a no questions asked return policy return or mm. replace depending on the part gotcha so i had to i oh i forgot i even reseated the cpu and it didn't change anything so i had to take out my 600 dollar i9 13900k processor and ship it back to Newegg, and they're going to ship me a different one. And if that doesn't fix it, then I got to buy a whole new motherboard. <laughs> well, so it, return it. But It wasn't like the Windows install on one of the M2s or something? Oh, so I, I forgot to mention, the one thing I did, somebody had a very good recommendation, and I tried this. I put a Linux install on a USB drive, and I tried booting into that, and it still hit the issue. So it, so it bypassed Windows completely, and it still was rebooting constantly. Wow. So... Yeah. So so the thing is the reason why I suspect the CPU is um I when I first benchmarked the CPU, I went into Cinebench and I ran it and it, and it gave me a score of like 30,000 and I was like, mm. "Wow, big number." And then I went online. <laughs> and I was like, "I 9300K Cinebench scores." And everybody was like, "39,000." And I was like, "Where's my fucking 25% performance?" Like I'm like so I, like I was tweaking it in the motherboard, I got it up to like thirty seven thousand, and I was like, okay, it's still a little weird that I'm not getting full performance, but okay, whatever. 
and then the CPU, and then, you know, the CPU motherboard issue, and I'm like, okay, well, it's also easier to replace the CPU than it is the entire motherboard. So I was like, let me try the CPU first. If that doesn't work, then I'll switch out the motherboard. But yeah, so I don't have a PC right now. Because the problem was it worked for like two, three days, just long enough for me to pull all the hard drives out of my old computer and put them in. So I still have my old computer. I could theoretically boot it up, but all it has is the C drive on it. And so it's like, yeah, it's it's just, uh, it's very frustrating. It's the worst a PC build has ever gone for me. But uh, hopefully I will see the other side of it because the, the PC, when it was working, it was fantastic. It was quiet. It was fast. It was great. My my C drive read speed was 6,700 megabits per second, which wow. is 10, 10 times a platter drive, which is insane when you think about it. Just the steps we have taken in computing is wow. insane. Yeah. So it's a nightmare. Everything's broken around me. PC's broken. <laughs> switch is broken. My Miata switch broken. is broken. Yeah, I started playing Sports Story, and <gasps> you, you've heard my switch. <laughs> yeah, my switch fan makes a noise, but it's okay because the fan still runs. But it makes like a every now and then it makes like a like a bearing grind noise. But mm -hmm. the, the the fan still runs. It's never overheated. I was like, fine, whatever. I don't care. Start playing Sports Story, which is of course is a very demanding switch game. Very. And it starts making the noise, and I'm like, I don't care. I'll just turn the volume up, <laughs> you know, and then it stops making the noise and then it starts making a <laughs> eh, eh, noise like every 10 seconds. And I'm like, OK, that's the sound of the fan not even spinning. And then I just quit Sports Story because I was like, there's no point in me playing on the switch and creating a save here if it's going to if I may have to replace the switch. Yeah. And so uh, it actually turns out there's a fan replacement kit on amazon for like 25 bucks comes with the fan the thermal paste that you have to replace like the screwdrivers the spudger and everything so i did that surgery last night and fingers crossed it's working i think the only thing was i had a slight hiccup with the sd card reader slot but like nice. i had to take that sucker like i had to get all the way down to like i don't want to say de-litting the cpu but taking the heat sink off the cpu oh yeah i, I glanced at that photo and i thought it from the perspective, I thought it was a laptop, but now I see it's a Switch with no Joy-Cons on it, uh, which makes way more sense. Yeah. I was like, what? Um, that's a, Honestly, that's it, crazy. it really wasn't that bad. Yeah, so there was, there was only two things that were annoying slash complicated slash difficult, which was the screws are JIS screws, which is, it's not Phillips. It's a variant of Phillips, like Japanese variant. But the mm -hmm. problem is that, the slots on the screws are so shallow and most screwdrivers have a point on them. So, so if that makes any sense, it's like yeah. if you take a screw, a Phillips head screwdriver and you slop and you, you cut off the point on it. So the problem was all my screwdrivers, even the ones supplied with it, even my technically GIS ones barely fit in those screws because they were too pointed. So some of the screws I had some issues with where I had to like apply a lot of downward pressure as I'm doing it, even though it wasn't mm -hmm. tight. And then some of the connectors are just like, I, I don't know how to describe it, but some of the connectors, they're like, they go into a slot, but they're underneath a ribbon cable. So you can't see where the slot is. So you just kind of push, you kind of put the ribbon cable over where you think it is and you just gently massage it and you hope to feel like a very soft click as it goes in. <laughs> and it was just, it was just very annoying because you're like massaging this delicate, very small electronics thing be like why aren't you clicking in yeah. and then you like lift it up and you're like i'm okay like you can't see it as you're trying to yeah. so uh other than that it took about an hour it seems to be working i played some sports story last night so nice yeah broken, that, but I'm that was similar to the when i did the game boy screens when i swapped those it was just like mm -hmm. very carefully take out the ribbon cable that connects the screen and like move it out of the way so yeah. you can get to the other part i didn't do any of the soldering stuff because i was just like yeah it's not what i want to do right now um yeah but yeah i gotta do more of those i did my nas is up and running i don't know if i mentioned that last time so that's running pretty well with plex and everything that's cool um yeah i like i like having that going uh now and then i um my uh my job has like free udemy 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 classes and stuff so i i found like a networking class like like basic computer networking and everything 
that I think I'm going to try taking at some point because like I've never formally sat down and been like what are networks what are all this like sort of stuff I was like I want to be able to do like docker scripts and stuff on my NAS so I think I'm gonna forward my learning a little bit um that's weird I never I never really thought of docker and NAS because docker is usually for well, Docker is just the deployment mechanism, right? But what do you... Yeah, you can, like, build containers and stuff to do specific things and everything. What do you need containers for? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just used to coming from, from my day job where containers is all about scaling. So mm. the idea is instead of having one service on a server that handles all the requests, you have containers of microservices. So as soon as you reach a threshold, it just spins up another microservice in a separate container. And so that's why I'm like all a NAS is doing is just a hard drive on the network. But I guess I could see it. If you start doing complicated stuff or you start getting a lot of hits, you could you could containerize it. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly like the Synology NAS is also a server. So like if I wanted to do like server things on it yeah. or like data collection and all that sort of stuff. So I want to start like doing more fun stuff, even though it's like doesn't directly apply to me. It's like just to learn that stuff, set up some things. So if I ever need to actually use it. Then I'm a little bit more yeah. equipped. Um, outside of that, no tech issues on my end, which has been great. Um, yeah, not much. Uh, how was how was your Christmas? Get anything good for the for the for the gamer? Uh, it's it pretty good. It was a little hectic because we we hosted again this year, so it's like one day you spend cleaning, the next day you spend hosting, the next day you spend cleaning. Um, yeah. But uh, it was still good. So this year, my family opted to do, amongst the adults, we did Secret Santa. Not a fan. I would rather have a lot of mediocre gifts than <laughs> a handful of good gifts, right? You know? Yeah. So uh, this was the year that I was like, fine, we can try it. But next year, I think, I think the problem is people uh, don't know what to get each other. So next year, my proposal is, look... I've got two proposals. Either we do Secret Santa again, but it's two Secret Santas. So you are gifting to two people, and two different people are gifting to you. Or everybody provides Amazon wish lists, so so everybody knows what to get each other. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was good. You know, Maggie got me some video games. She got me Atari 50 and uh, Pokemon Scarlet. Um, I got some... I got another puzzle from the Magic Puzzle Company, which is exciting. I'll have to do that at some point. Um, oh, I got... We've talked before about how the beauty of the Amazon gift list is that when you find something that you're not sure you want or that you don't feel like you should spend money on, you just put it on your gift list and somebody will buy it for you eventually. This... This is a podcast, so I will describe this. This is a little <laughs> tiny light. I saw this on TikTok. And somebody was showing it off. And the thing about TikTok is, like, they're doing a better job on TikTok of, like, saying this is sponsored. Like, this is some idiot talking to their camera from their bed. But if mm -hmm. you look down, it says sponsored because they're supposed to. And then you can tell, oh, don't listen to anything this idiot says because this is he's literally being paid by the company to pretend that he's a random consumer that found this cool product. This didn't say sponsored on it. But even with that, I was like, I'm not sure that I trust this. So I put it on my wish list. It's a little tiny light. Uh, it's got a magnet on it. It's got a little hot shoe on it. Um, it's probably, I don't know, what is that, like two and a half, maybe three inches by three inches. But it was like 40 bucks, and I was like, I'll just put it on my gift list. But check this out, all right? So it's got a couple modes. It's got a normal color temperature mode, so you can adjust the, the color temperature and the brightness. It has a hue mode, so like an RGB mode. And then it has an effect mode. <laughs> And like, like right now it's doing like police effects and then you can do like ambulance and you can do strobes and all this stuff. Wow. Um, but it's small. I'm going to blind my camera. It's rechargeable. It's super bright and it's yeah. awesome. Like, I think I'm going to use this instead of my RGB strips behind me because I can just throw this over here somewhere and, and light behind me. If I'm taking a picture of something, I can just throw this up real quick as an extra light because it's it's wireless um i may put it behind me as a backlight so it's one of those things where i was like i don't know if this 40 bucks is worth paying for this it may be a shitty light but it turns out it's fantastic it's called the photo olex uh tofu light it's called tofu. a tofu 
Yeah, because the the packaging it comes in is literally like a tofu package. <gasps> That's, awesome. that's how small it is. It fits inside a little tofu thing. So that's photo Olex, P H O T O O L E X tofu light. It's it's really, really good. It's like a cool thirty to forty dollar pocket LED light. I can't wait to find all the uses for it. That's probably the thing I'm most excited about. It's one of those things where you're like, that looks cool. Is it real? Does it work? And it blows your expectations away. What about you? What'd you yeah. get for Christmas? Um, I got some good stuff. I got a puzzle as well. It was one of that Lego minifigure puzzle. So it's just like a bunch of minifigures, which was really neat. Um, I got some good books. Uh, I got What If 2, which you got the first What If. Well, I got two What Ifs. Oh, you got two <laughs> What Ifs. I don't know what happened. I had it on my Amazon gift list, and I think somebody bought it not off the gift list. So two different mm. people bought me the same book. So I'm going to return one of them and probably get What If 2. Yeah. I, I, what If 1 was fun. I remember reading it. I remember fondly. Uh, and the second one I'm looking forward to. Uh, I got... Um, I'm, I'm really oh. curious, though, because I think there's a, chapter in, there's a chapter in What If 2 called What If, what if Trump Really Did Win the, the 2020 Election that I'm excited to, to read. <laughs> How funny would that be? This like science, science, <laughs> science tech math book, and in the middle of it, it just has like like a QAnon thing. I That'd be pretty that. great. Um, the one thing I did get, which is my, I've been putting it on my wish list for a while, and <laughs> so, I'm dying. You keep going. Someone finally bought. The funny thing is, your video happens before your audio happens. So I saw you coughing, and I was waiting for the audio to hit. Um. Anyways, uh, the thing I've been putting on my list for a while that someone finally bought me is uh the Waterloo Black Powder Starter Kit for Wargaming. Oh, and so so that's funny because you posted that you were working on it, and I thought you would. Did... So you didn't already have that? No, I'm slowly remembering. You had just always talked about it as good practice. but you didn't, didn't I had always talked that. about it because, yeah, it would be A, good practice, and B, it was... It, it's on Walmart for, like, 50, but I think it was on Amazon for, like, 75. And it comes with mm -hmm. 48 plus 48 plus 24. So that many figures. Plus cavalry. Um... And Jeez. stands for all of them. So, like, I was like, oh, sweet. So, my dad bought it for me because I've been into Napoleonic stuff and he's very into it. And he actually, uh, it's in one of the pictures I sent, but he gave me a while ago the uniforms of European countries from, like, 1700 to 1900. So, like, it has all of them yeah. in there. So, I've just been slowly putting them together. I'm There's not a good, like, all the videos on YouTube are people, like, reviewing it. And I'm trying to find videos of, like how to structure the troops because the the French troops that I'm putting together, there's six bodies with six backpacks and then there's nine heads or 11, 11 heads. So like you can do all the same heads mm -hmm. or you can do the mixture. So I just have to figure out like, I don't want to get to the end and then it's like, oh, I didn't make any of the grenadiers or any of the, not that I'm going to be playing anytime soon, but yeah. I'm trying to like... So I'm going off the box. On the box, there's art of like groups of four. So I'm just going to go off of those and, and build them out like that. And then properly paint them and color them later. But it, again, I, I mostly wanted it, A, because I like the Napoleonic Wars, and B, um, practice for figures. Because I can just hit these guys. Like all the... All the guides for these guys are like quick and dirty, which is great because that's all you need for these kinds of figures. So they're like, oh, spray them all white so it covers all of the tiny white details. And then you just paint over that so you don't have to get in there to do like the straps and stuff. Um, and I was like, sweet. Yeah. So that's um, I'm gonna be something that may help you is those figures were probably used in some early war games. So if you just check the war game manuals to see like allowed unit sizes then you could oh. build you could determine oh i can only have one grenadier per five person unit yeah there's two two rule books that it came with so there's like the quick start rule book and like the big black powder second edition um so i gotta read through those just to see uh what's what it it seems like the quick start rules reference the first edition rule book 
because it keeps going like go to page 10 in the rule book and i go to page 10 in the rule book and it is not <laughs> what i want so i was just oh, like wow i was like oh okay so i won't do that but that's very exciting uh so i'll be slowly working on that i was gonna build that sherman or not sherman that tank world war ii tank i have um but then i got this so i was like oh, I i'll think just it's a sherman. I, yeah actually it is a sherman so i just sit because i think I, we have we the same these, one yeah. yeah 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 uh we bought these tv dinner tables a while ago so i just put that in front of the tv and i'll like build the figures and because they're pretty easy to build my only problem is the one of the attachment points is the neck and the neck is flat but then curves up at the back a little bit yes so oh. Oh, you that's can't good. just cut it straight off you have to like dig in a little bit to cut it out to like because oh, that's the, where like the, the little greeble thing the sprue is stuck in there and if you if you cut it oh, too far yeah. then there's a little bit of a neck gap which would be covered up with paint anyways so I, I have um, some chisels that I might try to see if I can get it out a little bit easier. Um, but again, it's all practice, so I, I don't care that much. I have 105 yeah. other ones to work on. I mean, you could always putty fill it back. The, the, I've got some Timmy putty. I played around with it, and it works pretty well. It dries yeah, that's pretty smart. too. I should do that. Uh, on the video game front, uh, did I get any video games? I don't think so. Um, I did buy Gran Sports Turismo Story. 7. Fuck, I want to play that game. Uh, it is installed. So Actually, I think my PS5 is still in sleep mode because I installed it the other day. Sports Story I also bought. I played a tiny bit of, but I have been playing Pentiment, a video game by Obsidian Games. Um, hey, Pentiment's real good. Um, where, are you, where are you at? I am at uh, Act 4? I'm 15 hours in, so I think I'm near the end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah. I'm doing all that. I <laughs> I've, I, messed up. Um, act 1. <laughs> act 1. Well, well, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. I, there, I don't think there is a right answer in that game. You are no. long for the ride. There are no, choices, I, but there is not a there is not a correct choice. I hundred percent agree with you. I think it is structured that way. But yeah. the first first act or second act, whatever it is, when you're young, Andreas, um, I I investigated people, and then it was like, oh, go to the archdeacon to tell him what your findings are. And I was like, oh, okay, and, I'll and go to talk, him. I'll tell you him. You said a little bit too much about the wrong person. Yeah. No, no, quite the opposite. I was like, oh, I'll tell him a little bit, but I get to investigate more, so I'll just tell him some of my findings. So I got to talk to him, and he's like, oh, who do you, what did you find? And I told him one thing, and he was like, oh, okay, that, that seems reasonable. He's like, did you find anything else? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, I, I want to go look around some more because it didn't say solve the case it said just tell him of some of your findings so i thought i would have more of a chance so i told him about one person and immediately it goes execution of blank <laughs> so I told, that's yeah. the only person that's getting executed yes. i go oh whoops <laughs> god yeah that game's um, fantastic i can't wait to discuss it more at game of the year totally yeah so i i'm pretty far into it i've really I, I i play it and then i go to like watch tv and work on the figures and i'm like oh, what if i just played more pentiment um I, I i agree with like the complaints of the fast travel stuff i think there's an easy like it's crazy because like fallout new vegas an obsidian game had a like had fast travel and stopped you if you couldn't fast travel for story reasons so like i don't I don't know why you couldn't fast travel home and it just appears you into the painting where you, you got stopped on your way home to like have a little discussion. So um, yeah. that, and the other thing was I wasn't talking to everyone because I wasn't treating it like I should talk to everyone. And then uh, in like act two, I was like, Oh, I need to talk to everyone. Uh, yeah. But then the problem is it doesn't make it clear it needs like a check mark. It needs like a Resident Evil 2 remake type system where it's like you are done with this person without you having to go up to them and they give you the one line. Hello, Andreas. You know, it, it, so a lot of that game, like 99% of the frustration of that game is 
bad UX, honestly. The lack of fast travel and feeling like you have to constantly recheck everything and everybody because it's not clear what, what you're done with, what you've already seen, etc. Yeah, and there were too many unmarked quests. Like, there were a lot of little things that I did around town. I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah, with that. I, I guess I'm okay with that. Fallout has the exact same thing. But it was just like, it was a lot of things to just remember to do without any notes. Whereas in like Fallout New Vegas or anything, you'll have like in your MISC notes, you'll have something that at least ties back to an unmarked quest. Um, But you know there's there's the quest thing, right? Yeah, the quest journal. Yeah. I mean, that covers most of it. But there were a couple quests or like little things you could do that aren't marked in there at all. They're just like quick little things. Yeah, you yeah, do. yeah. But like in other games, you would get like a note or something, but there's no section for like miscellaneous notes or anything. So, yeah, that notebook was kind of broken. Like in Act One, I was looking at a person and they were giving me details about that person from Act Two. Oh, wow. Like this isn't a spoiler, but. I think it was I think it was Ava and I was like who's Ava and I go look at it and it's it's Otto and Ava I think and and they were like and they were like in the game people were like Otto and Ava they're always flirting but they're never doing anything and then I go in the notebook and I'm like who's Ava and they're like Ava is married to Otto and I'm like what (laughs) (laughs) like like it was literally giving me character details from an act ahead and then the quests are not the the quest tab is not super well written and clear <clears throat> so yeah. overall fantastic game but really the only problems i have with it are, are around like little ux stuff like that yeah totally um yeah I, I had a few issues with that i had a few characters who would even though i had progressed the story would talk to me as if i had first arrived again and then got to the second yeah. part and i was like oh like there was one line you need to get rid of to make this thing make sense uh because cuz i hadn't said hi to them on the first day and then i didn't talk to them finally until the third day so they were greeting me like oh i heard you're in you're in tassing but they had already seen me at a crime scene so like it was a weird yeah. thing so still fantastic game super small team on it from what i've heard they like separated and just like did this game on their own which props to them i still love the printing press writing and the scribble out right like all the different writing styles is so funny and cool um i have it in like fast mode i didn't go all the way and just turn it to the text appears but because i like it getting written out and seeing like if i can read it properly Uh um so that's super fun um that's Honestly, that's really all I've been playing. I haven't... I've been trying to finish that. <clears throat> I need to get to Sports Story. Um, is what, what have you... Have you been up to anything with your PC down? Uh, well, like I said, when the PC was working, I played literally like eight hours of Vampire Survivors over like a 24-hour period. I just couldn't stop playing it. Um, it. It was one of those things where I played a lot of Vampire Survivors... But I knew that I only had, like, maybe one-third of the achievements unlocked. And so I was like, I know there's a lot of this game I haven't seen yet. Especially since, um, you know, I played it after it first came out. And then I went back a little bit later. But they've been constantly adding stuff. And they just had a DLC come out. Um, And then listening to all the Game of the Year discussions, I think it was Dan Riker in particular, started talking about, like, he was like... What did he see? He's like, oh, yeah, best weapon, Song of Mana. And he's like, just wait until you get to, like, the Arcana and, like, the combos. And I'm like what the fuck are you talking about? Like, he started talking about all these mechanics and weapons and stuff that I had not experienced in the game. Like, I hadn't even seen, and I was like, oh, I gotta play some more of this game. So so I, I played a lot more of it, and it was just good for, like I said, game this time of the year, Game of the Year discussions, Giant Bomb, uh, Fire Escape cast, I haven't even hit Next Lander yet. It's a lot of, like, when we play that in the background, it's several, several, several hours of discussion, so it's good to just have something to do while that's going on and vampire survivors a fantastic podcast game so still a great game i i need to keep playing it um because i really want to uh, i want to get some of these unlocks now that i realize it fuck i it doesn't have cross save with the xbox but it does with i can play it on my laptop anyways um <laughs> excuse me bless you the other one i've been playing is a uh, police game called atari 50 
um, this is what I got for Christmas. And um, so this is, it's a collection of old Atari games. I don't, I don't give two fucks about Atari, to be honest with you. Like that's way before my time. Wow. And honestly, those games are too old for me to go back in time and be like, wow, punk, you know? Um, but Jeff Gersman and uh, I believe it was Vinny Caravella couldn't stop talking about this game because it's not just a collection of old games. It is also a bunch of interviews and images and stories from the Atari era. So there is a campaign to this collection. It's not like Rare Replay where it's just like, boom, 30 games, pick whichever one you want to play. It mm -hmm. does have that mode. Um, but I've played maybe about two hours of it so far. And there's a campaign mode where it's literally like a timeline. And it's like 1971, Atari is founded. And it's like, has like little like two sentence blurbs. Like you're walking through a museum. Like it'll show you an image. It'll like show you one of the original like business cards from Atari. And then it'll be like a two sentence explainer. And then there'll be uh, a video with somebody from Atari. Because what they did was they went out and they got some of these people from, from Atari and uh that are still alive and they sat them down and they interviewed them and so you'll watch these like two minute videos like i watched a video last night where the question was like hey there was always this rumor that people were doing drugs in the office at atari and they asked them and these two people were like there were no drugs in the office at atari at the office i was in nobody was doing that and there was this other guy who was like look i was smoking weed every single day in the office <laughs> Like we were using the the intra office mail system, so not the post office, but the mail between the different Atari offices to send weed. There was one guy whose job, like, slowly basically became to be the weed dealer because that's what a majority of his time was was getting weed and bringing it to the office. And he was like, he was like, at one point, one of the straight laced salesmen like complained about the smell of weed in the hallways to management, and so management just moved him to a different part of the office instead of doing anything. <laughs> and so, like, there's all these really cool stories. Like, like another one real quick was um, they framed it really cool. The, the interview was a whole bunch of people talking about, like, Atari is legendary. You know, like, there's the story about the first Pong machine at the bar and when it breaks down, and it's these people telling the story as they've heard it, but they don't know if it's true or not. And then they're interspersing it with the guy that is part of the story and he knows the truth and the story is basically they that they didn't build pong to be a game they built it as a proof of concept just to be like hey can we build a stupid little arcade thing that has a stupid little game on it we don't even think it's that good and will people like pay to play it like they were literally not expecting it to be anything at all it was a proof of concept does it work yes hardware works okay let's build a real game and so they went to a bar and they just put the first pong machine in the bar and the next day, the bar owner calls, and he's just like, hey, your fucking machine's broken. Come get it. And they're like, what are you talking about? And he goes, it's not fucking working anymore. It's a piece of shit. Come get it. And they go over, and they're like, okay. So they go over the, to the game, and it's doing the attract mode, which is like the demo mode where things are happening. And he goes to put a quarter in, and it doesn't take the quarter. And he's like, and he opens the coin box, and the coin box is filled with quarters. Wow. <laughs> like, the game was so popular that it jammed itself in the coin box. And he was like, oh, no, we've got something crazy on our hands here. And it's one of those stories that, like, the way they frame the interview is, like, it's like Cliffy B. It's like a whole bunch of other people who are just like, you know, tell me what you, tell me your thoughts on Atari. And they're like, well, there's that story. I don't know if it's true. And they're telling the story. And then they cut to the guy that's like, no, I was the guy that took the call. And I went out there and the coin box was full. Damn, so it's really that's awesome. It's, it's really cool. It really is like an interactive museum. And then in the midst of that like you're hearing all these stories about pong because you're in like 1973 or whatever in the timeline and then they're like hey you want to play pong and you're like fuck yeah let's play pong so then you sit there and you play pong for like five minutes and you're like cool so it's 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 just a really cool interesting fresh take on the the um i i, I there's like a, a a rough term for it but kind of like the the gaming anthology genre um you know, they could have just had a whole bunch of games in here and been like, it's the 50th, 50th anniversary of Atari. Check it out. Check out these games. They could have very easily did that, but they decided not to. They decided to create like a virtual museum, basically. And it mm -hmm. it feels really cool. I'm only up to like 1977. I didn't realize they did pinball machines for a little bit. They also built at one point the largest pinball machine in the world. Oh, man. It was a Hercules pinball machine. It was three feet wide and eight feet long. 
and it, instead of using pinballs, it used uh, billiard balls. <laughs> Dang. But apparently their their pinball ma machines were not good because they just didn't understand like the hardware aspect of it. So they talked about how they kept putting the um the, instead of the score being in front of the player, they put the score down by the player's left hand. So they kept having to look down at it, and then they also put the circuit board underneath the play field so like all the dust and dirt and stuff would eventually end up on the circuit board instead of it being up right behind it so all this different stuff that they talked about how like the design was bad so they ended up getting out of the the pinball business but yeah it was it's really cool i think it's 40 bucks uh i'm not done with it yet so i'm not sure if it's worth 40 because when i get to the actual games i play them for like a minute or two and then i'm like cool yeah. You know, but but it's a cool experience so far. Honestly, my biggest fucking problem with the game, I believe the interviews. This is by Digital Eclipse. I believe the interviews were shot by Drew Scanlon. That's what I've heard. They shot them in front of a green screen, and they didn't chroma key. They didn't. There's a green screen bounce on people, and the chroma key mm. is not that good. So like you're watching these videos in like. 1080p on a big tv and you're like this interview is not shot that well and like i've shot interviews i'm not that great at it either i probably would have made the same mistakes but for a game like this and with somebody who has a lot of video experience it's like a shame that the interviews don't actually look that good you know yeah i hate interviews on green screens i would rather take anything else like a wall or yeah. like posters or something but yeah it is what it is yeah. um but it's a cool game. It's a really cool game. And then um, just to finish it out, I've been playing some sports story. I'm only about an hour in. It's pretty good so far. I forgot that this was kind of a complaint I had with the first game, which is that they don't. Their questing and hint system is not great. So they'll be like, hey, go get some orange juice. And then they kind of just expect you to like roam around this area and talk to everybody. And then. Like, there was one point last night where, like, I, I kept roaming around this area to do a whole bunch of tasks, and I was toward the end of it, and they were like, <clears throat> they were like, we need three people, three more people to play volleyball. And they're like, I'll do it, I'll do it. Then they're like, hmm, who should we ask next? And they're like, maybe Laura will want to play volleyball. And I'm like, who the fuck is Laura? <laughs> I'm like, you're supposed to, like, there's literally, like, 50 people in this area that I've talked to. Yeah. Granted, not everybody has told me their name, but I'm supposed to remember that, like, this person over here is Laura. And I was like... So I had to go around and just talk to a bunch of people real quick and like see which one would pop the correct dialogue. So they're they're like I don't want to call it breadcrumbing because that's usually more of like a literal UI system, but their 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 way of taking the player through the story, bouncing between different people in different areas, and what you're supposed to do next is not super great and can be frustrating. And I remember in the first game there were points where I had to look stuff off and be like, "What am where am I going? What am I supposed to do here?" So yeah, still still got annoyed. a lot of charm on it though. Not I was annoyed time. by that too. The first person I talked to was Laura. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> I I couldn't remember if it was someone from the first game I was supposed to remember. Um, but it's been. I, I mean, I I played Golf yeah. Story, like it came out immediately with the Switch, right? I don't know. It was not immediately, but I think it was like t late 2017. Yeah, so I haven't played Golf Story since 2017 because I remember playing it in my first apartment in Jersey yeah. City. Uh, so it's been quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> nice. Should uh, Do you want to hit some of this news stuff? Yeah, I mean, I think there's really only one in here that could be a little bit fun, which is there is an image on a website called Red Dite of somebody holding promotional marketing material. Oh shit, I clicked too much stuff. Holding promotional market material for uh Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, it looks like they're holding like a like a Nintendo Switch pamphlet and in that pamphlet there's different pages for different games. One of them is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and it has a big box on it that says Nintendo Switch Online. Now, this could mean anything. This could mean full-blown online multiplayer. This could just mean hey, cloud save but let's play a little game here called if tears of the kingdom has multiplayer what would you want it to be wow what was this on sorry Hello? sorry Hello? i was I've, i was i was you know i was two sentences in before i realized this wasn't english um 
<laughs> Anyways, um, I. What, I can't even think what multiplayer like the only thing I could think of is like a Dark Souls messaging system or like a ghost system. Oh, which would good. be pretty cool. Um, I don't think there would be Why any direct. Just, I mean, co-op. But I think but that's the thing is I think the knee jerk reaction. I don't think they would necessarily do this. But what if there was co-op? What if there were two of you running around? One is Zelda, one is Link. That could be kind of fun. Yeah, I guess. I would just expect that to be in the promotional images, and it's not. Like, I can't yeah. see them holding that, that close that to big. their chest. My gut reaction when I saw Nintendo Switch Online, which I know isn't true, made me think it was part of Nintendo Switch Online, like a Game Pass thing. And I was like, oh. oh. But once you said it would just require it, that makes me think... Um. <clears throat> That makes me think some sort of online capability a la Dark Souls or Death Stranding where, like, messages yeah. or hints or... I mean, honestly, it could be, like, I like online that. leaderboards like or idea. something like that. It's probably something yeah, stupid. I, I don't want it to be... Yeah. I don't want it to be something stupid like leaderboards for shrines or something. But but I, I I'm not sure that I necessarily want co-op but i i do like i do really like your idea of you know the soulsborne idea of people are leaving hints and messages on the ground because it could go back into the meverse thing imagine if they're leaving like meverse type messages on the ground that could be mm. that could be pretty try finger butthole yeah that could be pretty I, good <laughs> someone said well in wind waker hd you could draw stuff and put them in bottles and send them out like that could be a similar thing. Yeah. Um, man, people are talking about Wind Waker, and I still haven't played Wind Waker. I need to play Wind Waker. Wind Waker. It's I played like I played like two three hours of it a couple of years ago, and it's it's good. It's not great. It's it has like a handful of dungeons, but then the world between the dungeons is just like okay. Yeah, it's one of those games that has high highs and like <clears throat> mediocre lows, where you're just like oh, okay. Um, um yeah i just i i just like the idea of we've talked about this before but tears of the kingdom i need them to really do something different from breath of the wild um and it looks like they're doing that you know they're adding the whole sky thing they're adding a lot of stuff flying etc and if they added in some some co-op element that would be cool i think it would be fun to just do some co-op stuff like because that's that's the thing is i wish co-op and elden ring worked better because I would love to just like load into Elden Ring with somebody and just roll around messing people up and stuff. Um, yeah. And and so when I think about doing that in Breath of the Wild, where it's like, yeah, you had your solo playthrough and that was magical, but maybe you just need to get back in that sandbox with somebody else and have some fun. That could be cool. Yeah. I um. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about it more. Like, they have made multiplayer Zeldas, so like Four Swords. Um, so I could see them doing that. Yeah. My only concern so far is. Um, I hope they change up the ground more from those like initial trailers. It doesn't seem like it's changed that much. And I want to have that sense of discovery on the ground again, even though like, obviously there's a whole new sky stuff, but yeah. I don't want it to turn into, Oh, I don't go to the ground. Cause it's the same as the first game, you know, but so I hope it's at least yeah. different enough and, and not, I know it'll be different like people wise, obviously, but I want it to be different, uh, like a little bit geographically. So at least, there's new things. And I, I can see them doing that where, like, I wonder if where those things have risen up, there's giant holes or something, um, which would be neat. Um, yeah, I forgot that's coming out so soon. I'm, I'm genuinely excited for that. Um, when, when is that? Is that March? Uh, May 12th? Is that what it said in French? Or whatever language that was? Oh, I think it was May French. the 12th be with you. May the 12th be with you. Um, man, should I get an OLED switch for that game? Man, when my fan died, before I looked up if I could replace it, I was like, man, I should go get an OLED Switch. But honestly, I, it's, I don't think it's worth it. If you're buying a Switch fresh, you should buy an OLED Switch. But if, if you have a current one, there's no reason to get an OLED Switch. Yeah, that's true. Especially I have if you're going to the... play on the TV most of the time. Yeah, I have the Animal Crossing, and I don't play in handheld mode really ever. So um, I can do that. Oh, Steam Deck's been getting a ton of use. Karen's like... 50 billion hours into graveyard keeper 
so much so that I bought it on the Steam sale oh. because it looks like a lot of fun. Um, so she's been having a blast with that. Is that is that from this year? Uh, no, unless it came out. Uh, I can check. Unless it came out of early access this year, but I don't know if it was in early access. But I've, I'm, I, forget. I have a list of like six or seven games deep that are potential Game of the Year nominees that I need to, to play. Yeah, I did buy Melvor Isle. It's like not a crazy it. person. Uh, I was playing it on my phone and I didn't like that. And it was like three bucks on Steam and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, no. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's Keeper one came of those... out in 2018. <laughs> oh, okay. It's one of those incremental games where you're just like, this is scratching the itch, but I don't like how it feels, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. And it's I was like, I just wanted to see what it was like um, just to play it. But yeah, that Steam sale's on for a little bit longer. I bought some other like random little indie games like I usually do. So I'll, I'll check those out. Hidden Gems. I did buy evil west because people keep talking about how that is just a really good over the top xbox 360 era action game that came out and mm -hmm. i'm excited to try it but unfortunately it's on pc so it may be like a week or more before i get my pc back so we'll just see yeah. what happens hey literally the icon right now is pc plus so just add a plus on your pc and it will make it better um <laughs> i think that's it is that all we have to talk about we got wishlist spotlight. Oh yeah, hit me with that. Yeah, so this is actually this is a game I found uh, the other day on TikTok. Turns out TikTok is great for finding like weird little indie games and stuff. Um, it's called Rising Front, um, and it is a game. <sighs> Give me a second here. It's uh, Rising Front. This is on Steam. It's not released yet. I believe they're trying to get it out. Uh, it says fourth quarter 2022, but that's really probably early next year since we're on December 30th already. This is from Sandstorm Studios. This is kind of, it's kind of weird. It's like uh it's like low poly model, but high graphics World War One game. Um, it's an FPS. They're really trying to build in scale. So they're talking about they already support hundreds of troops. They're trying to get to thousands. The one of the things that made me really interested in it was the TikTok video was him talk the developer talking about how he designed the cover system. And he says he has, like, dynamic cover for the AI in terms of, like, they will try and find some cover nearby. But he is also hand-painting cover spots into the map. So it showed him, wow. like, placing things. And he was like, it's very tedious and annoying, but it's the only way that I can guarantee that the AI will work well. And he kind of showed a before and after. And the before is just, like, you know, literally, like, hundreds of AI just, like, running through the, the trenches and, like, running across the open and then he turned on the cover system and they're like staying behind cover, moving from cover to cover. And it like just made the game so much better. So this this feels like one of those games where not that the game is ugly or any way it's not, but like their focus is not necessarily on graphics or anything like that. Like, like that. It's about an FPS with scale and like really good AI and just like lots of lots of um, like interesting touches on the FPS mechanics like he keeps talking about how there's there's like an RTS part of this, like a real time building system. So you can probably build new trenches as you're playing the game. This just feels like this kind of goes in that genre of indie games that I really like where the original battlefields were really fun because you're on a battlefield with a whole bunch of other people shooting and fighting. And it's not necessarily mm. other players. A lot of times it's other bots. And it's all about like you're just a grunt in this big battle and you build off of that. You're like, okay, what if I have more people? What if I have more vehicles, more weapons, more mechanics so I can build stuff? Um, and it's not really caring about, oh, we've got to hit ray tracing. We've got to have a AAA Battlefield 2042 because that game was absolute dog shit. This is like, no, let's talk about big battle FPS core. What does that core game feel like? And let's improve on that core game. And so, so that's the uh, rising front game. It may be coming out in early access in the next couple months from what it looks like and it um, i'm gonna pick it up looks like it's yeah. fun i did i did notice this developer also has previously released a game i was just gonna say that called rise of liberty which looks like the same thing but the revolutionary war and it's on sale for four dollars right now very positive came out in 2022 
it, it honestly it looks like a roblox game <laughs> in the style but i but like one of the roblox games where you're like wow this looks good um yeah i'm literally gonna buy this right now yeah let me know how it is rise of liberty well it doesn't show up with rise of unfortunately um well awesome one of, that's one, fantastic. one of the things that's interesting about these this genre of games is that they tend to be single player they're like look this isn't about a multiplayer this isn't about beating other people this is about you being surrounded by hundreds of bots in a battle same thing with raven field and stuff and i kind of like that because when i grew up playing these fps games like battlefield and stuff i remember my internet wasn't quite good enough and or my PC wasn't good enough, so I couldn't really play multiplayer. And so I was always just loading up Battlefield 1942 matches with like 64 bots in it, 120 bots in it. Mm. And that was a lot more fun for me than playing with real people. And this and these genres are pretty much always single player where they're like, no, we're not going to have multiplayer. This isn't about joining a server with 100 people. This is about you being surrounded by hordes of bots and having fun with that. Not to not to change subject. What's the name of that Napoleonic Wars game? Hold fast. Hold fast. Okay. I want to see if that was on sale. It's iffy. It it that game doesn't feel that great, but the community is a lot of fun because a lot of people are role playing while you're playing it. Yeah, I'll look that up later. I think it's hold, um, hold, hold fast. Nations at war. Hold fast. Nations at war. That's our wishlist spotlight, though. Rising front. Go wishlist it. That's a command. Yes. Go re go wishlist that. Um, I have one last thing. Uh, I finally found one of these cards from the card stream. We've got the Babes card. Uh, oh it's a Babes God. bribery card. Why is, it, why is it smudged? What is that white stuff on it? Uh, it's uh, her dress. Uh, I showed this to Chris. He said, why is the lady on the right holding wearing a Nazi uniform? And I said, <laughs> I said, she's hot, not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix it. Go check her. out that stream, folks. Uh, yeah, it was super fun. Oh now God. I have boxes and boxes of cards to open. Um, I didn't get any of the magic misprints in my Wyvern boxes. I'm very pissed. But now I can just hand them out to children on the street um, and save the cards with a thief on it for me. Um... Folks, that's going to be the show. What a wonderful thing we have done. I'm going to hit the outro button. It's 60 seconds long now. Folks, you can find us subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel. No, it won't. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can go to anywhere you want, including buying our merch. Eh. Merch. Um, Santa Claus is here on the screen with us because he would like you to know that you can follow me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can follow Ian on Twitter. Follow Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. Uh, we will be back this weekend at some point, probably Sunday with the stream. I'm not sure what we're doing yet. We'll figure it out. I probably won't be on it, to be honest with you. Ian probably won't be on it because he doesn't have a computer. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone, and we will see you uh, next week. Bye.